Hello everybody, it's Osha Ziz here, Bumpy Ride Time. This is an old ATX power supply. Uh, this is a uh, addition to my uh, video that I just uh, put out here recently called Must See. If you haven't seen that, uh, it's a pretty good little video there for some information. Anyway, uh, I needed to be able to run these uh, old hard drives off of uh, power supply. Off the original power supply so I looked around and found out that you can take this uh, plug right here off these old ATX power supplies find the green and the black wire and uh, some people say you're supposed to put a resistor in between these and uh, they might be right I'm not sure but uh, uh, you cut those wires and, and splice them or put a switch in there and then you can use these uh, plugs uh, to run your hard drive However, when I did this one right here, I uh, had a bit of a problem because I had it turned on and uh, everything was working fine. I went across my lab and I seen a whole bunch of smoke over there and poof, something burned out and I don't know what it was, but strangest thing, it still worked. Anyway, so the whole purpose was for me to see if I could get uh, one of these hard drives together to run. Arr, where you at? that way okay there we go what I got right here is one of these hard drive motors here on top of another hard drive motor which is being run by the normal circuit out of one of these uh, max tour uh, one of these max tour um, old hard drives I didn't share all the specs on it Either way, uh, <clears throat> what I wanted to see is if that uh, if that hard drive motor would have enough to do the same thing in the last video, if it would have enough RPMs to actually produce some electricity. So uh, we'll do that here in just a second. But in the meantime, I took one of these uh, Maxdoor hard drives, and if you see, I put a fitting in the side of it. Arr. <laughs> to blow air in there in attempts to make a Tesla turbine and I took uh, about let's see one two three about four or five of those platters looks like four four platters and uh, about four old rings uh, to, to uh, keep the platters separated and squeezed them all in there and be basically built a, a Tesla turbine out of a out of a hard drive of course, uh, same principle as what I'm fixing to show you here. Uh, this, for some reason, must have been not a very good hard drive because uh, it really didn't give me uh, much voltage out of it when I put some air to it. But as far as the turbine, it works. So if you want to make you a cheap old Tesla turbine, get you one of these old hard drives, drill a hole in there to blow that air through that. And then, of course, there's a place for the air to go back out on the other side. Anyway, I'll have to do a video on that some other day, but uh, that's my hard drive uh, Tesla turbine there. <laughs> so let me get you back up here on this deal. Sorry about all that bouncing around. Anyway, I wanted to see if this thing had enough RPMs and I needed a power supply that would actually run the normal circuit board in these old hard drives. And so... I uh, yeah, did the old ATX uh, power supply right there and I took a bunch of these rings like this and uh, stacked them and taped them all together to make my coupling so that this here would uh, this here would meet uh, match up with the uh, motor on the bottom and, and try to keep it as stable as possible which, which is not perfectly uh, perfectly stable but it does work so let's uh, let's get into it let me see here I want to get some wires up out the way. This is for another deal here. Do 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 do. See, it's that one there. And where are you at, Jive Turkey? I need this one. And I need that one. All right. So essentially what I'm doing is running uh, the AC power supply. It's uh, like a 9 volt AC power supply. It's actually 120 volts uh, steps down to 9 volt AC. And 
I've got uh, that this uh, hard drive motor run backwards out of the hard drive motor in through the uh, AC power supply and uh, going to run my uh, little LED light strip over here. So let's uh, turn this on and uh, see if we can get this thing to, to kick. Well, you can see right now that the uh, hard drive wanted to vibrate off of there, but <laughs> um, it's uh, it's got plenty enough RPMs to uh, kick it up. I'm gonna let this thing run for a little bit. Uh, if I don't run out of time over here, I'm gonna let it run for a little bit. And for some reason, I don't know if it's off balance or whatever, but after a certain point, it'll build up RPMs, and you actually hear it kick up and see the lights get brighter on there. Right now, it's showing. 74.1 volts on the voltmeter. Turn that on. And that's AC. Give us a few minutes here. See that kicks up. There. There you go. Huh. <coughs> So it's definitely got enough RPMs to run that uh, deal. So essentially, starting off with 12 volts coming out of this ATX power supply, running the bottom hard drive with the uh, the normal circuit that uh, was on the hard drive. Of course, I took out all the disk and uh, and the arms and everything like that, and the magnets. And so all we got left in this casing is the uh, circuitry underneath that uh, it plugs into and that uh, hard drive motor is connected to this hard drive motor with a bunch of these rings right here that I stacked and made a uh, deal to uh, get them to connect and it's on there pretty tight got a little bit of vibration going on but you can see um, let me turn that uh, all right where's it at there it is watch this we're at 90.05 right now. Alright, that's uh, 102.5 showing uh, 102.6, somewhere around about. Anyway, that's uh, without being on a load. And with it, with it on a load, it's got uh, 90.7 uh, on there. So anyway, uh, I also have, I ah, did burn it, I also have right here a uh, DC power supply, AC to DC, that I'm using to run this little motor over here. <clears throat> of course, this doesn't have enough RPMs to do them both at the same time, so whenever I connect this, you'll hear, you'll hear it bog down. And I got to give the fan a little kick, but it is putting out enough to get it to run that little fan. And without that, there you go. So I thought that would be a neat little update to show you with that uh, running one of these hard drive motors as a generator. <clears throat> and I don't know if you can see down in there or not, but there's only two two of the wires off of that hard drive that I'm using. You could use either two or both. You could use uh, the other two for a total separate deal. Anyway, uh, let's see if I get that on there. Oh, there it is. It's 90.8 volts AC with uh, it being under a load. Take the load off, and it jumps up to about 102, 103.
I'm sure with a little bit of tinkering around with some capacitors, I could get that fan to self-start. Because, uh, let me show you something here real quick. Alright. Now, when that's running, it's 17.7 without the capacitor. If I connect the capacitor, you notice it jumps up to about 29.0 volts there. So I think with a couple of strategically placed capacitors and I'm going to try out a whole bunch of these different uh, little transformers right here just to see what the best results that I get out of it. But either way, there you go, man. Running a uh, <coughs> running a hard drive motor for a generator. Wait for that thing to kick up again. That sure is noisy. Maybe that's what I should have done. Should have held it like that. Anyway, there you go. One hard drive motor running another hard drive motor. Motor generator. Putting out 91 uh, volts uh, under load. And over 103 something without being on a load. AC. Thought that was pretty cool. Anyway, I hope you found that kind of interesting. So uh, if you liked it, give me the old thumbs up down there and just uh, let me know what you think down there in the comment section. Peace and love, everybody. Stay tuned.